Welcome to the Awaken Beauty Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about five ways to stress proof your brain. When you're stressed out, you feel thrown off balance, you feel your mind racing, and you're basically thinking of every negative outcome that you could imagine. Your muscles tighten, you feel as if you can't sit still or think straight and you just zone out and you possibly turn to food or you turn to Instagram, TV, or a glass of wine. Alternatively, you drive yourself so hard that you live an unbalanced and unhealthy life. Speaking for myself, you may want to get rid of all of this stress, but you can learn how to accept the stress and you can transform the way you think about it so you can actually benefit from it. And so today we're just going to connect a few dots and hopefully clear up how our brain works with stress. So here I'm going to describe how to put a stop to unhealthy responses to stress and become more cognitively and emotionally resilient. So your brain stress response. The first step is to understand your brain and your body's natural stress responses. And so once you understand and you connect these dots, you can work on changing the stress, let's call it mindset. And the, the tools that we give you here today and how you think about, and you can create a new practice and how your brain possesses what we call neuroplasticity. And this is basically how we can change the way we think and how we can create new pathways. So the stress response begins when the amygdala, an almond-shaped structure in the center of your brain, senses a threat. Now, what it does is it reacts by initiating a cascade of neurotransmitters and hormones like adrenaline, norepinephrine, and cortisol that prepare the body to create that fight or flight uh, response, kind of like you're running from a tiger. So if your brain perceives that you're stressed, you're running from this tiger, it, it basically turns on the parasympathetic system and that nervous system creates this freeze response. So that fight and flight freeze response is very rapid and your body may take a reaction to maybe you see a, a snake on the ground or you run a yellow light and you realize that you almost hit somebody. That fight or flight freeze response is adaptive. It's there to help you to survive an immediate danger. But the problem is that when you're dealing with more complex interpersonal and constant content, chronic stresses as we all are, the amygdala actually hijacks your brain. And you may say things later regret or send off an angry quick email or scream at your partner, your work colleague, or your child. And so these are impulsive, destructive ways. So to be happy and successful in work, in life, in the way that we love and have relationships with others, you really need to know how to get back on track when your amygdala hijacks your brain and creates all of these neurochemicals. So getting back on track is when your amygdala actually hijacks your brain and to get it back into this very nice cohesiveness, you need to use another part of the brain. Now, this is really interesting. And this is the part of the brain that we call the prefrontal cortex. And it's situated behind the forehead. And it's the brain's executive center. It's located near the top of the brain. And it receives all the information about the stressor. But it actually happens at a more slow rate. The prefrontal cortex is basically what we call the CEO of your brain. And if you send the message to amygdala, to the amygdala, telling it that everything is safe, it's okay, you can move out of this fight or flight response, it actually helps carry those messages to the other parts of the brain and a direct, mindful, effective response to the stressor. And so the strategies below are deliberately here to recruit your prefrontal cortex to take control of your stress reaction rather than letting your amygdala be in charge. This is really important. So here are five ways to redirect your stress response. 
slow things down. Learn to slow down, breathe before you respond to different circumstances or stressors so that that prefrontal cortex has time to get on board. This can help for so many different types of stressors in our life when either a colleague or a partner criticizes you or you open up an unpaid bill and realize that it's late or just have some judgmental thoughts and you're just kind of on wit's end for the day. So stay mindful. Staying mindful helps you be deliberate about how you use your mind, how you are attaching to your heart and all these other compassionate parts of yourself and just being the observer of your thoughts. You may think, hmm, what's going on here? Extracting yourself up, maybe seeing yourself from a different point of view and it will help you not blurt something else out when you're tempted to say something that you shouldn't. So mindfulness really works best when you have learned these skills by meditating regularly and practicing mindful states so that your mind and your body can switch over into this phase when you're under high amounts of stress. You communicate better and you also communicate better between your amygdala and the prefrontal cortex that's creating this new dynamic relationship between the two to work together. So next is finding a sense of control, that monkey brain where our body and our mind gets all stressed out. It gets uncontrollable, unpredictable, and events happen where we anticipate that we're losing control. So think about the different aspects of this situation that you can control in which you can't focus your energy on trying to affect change in the things that you can actually influence while working on the mindfully accepting things that you maybe can't at that time. And you then want to broaden your view. And so when the amygdala triggers anxiety and negative emotions, this automatically narrows your mental perspective towards monitoring and avoiding any threat. And so as a result, you don't think about positive aspects, you're not thinking about other perspectives, and you're being very judgmental and you can't creatively solve the problem. And there are other ways to see stressors or challenges, and these can be different ways that we can create growth opportunities out of them instead. So you want to redirect your brain chemicals and all of your energy into mastering this stressful situation, which actually can enhance the motivation and the effectiveness of the problem at hand. So then we want to find the right mindset. And so rather than focusing on the negative or trying to fight or flight and avoid the stress, you can actually gain perspective and strength from the situation and the skills that you're learning here today about the brain and the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex and how they work together and how you can create more effectiveness between them and slowing things down, being more introspective and giving all the different perspectives so that you can create a larger um, picture to create a more positive mindset in dealing with the situations at hand more appropriately. So to review, we learned about the pre prefrontal cortex and the amygdala and the amygdala hijack. And the hijack has been known for a long time. And especially as women, we're always in this rush state and we're always rushing to things. And so unfortunately, we've been hijacked for a very long time. So it's really critical to really gain understanding and connect your own personal dots about stepping outside of yourself, maybe practicing that, envisioning that, stepping out of yourself and saying, hmm, what's going on here? What are the different perspectives? Am I acting out of a pattern or something that um, consistently shows up in my life and getting curious about that? And then actually thinking about, okay, what's going on in my brain right now? I understand that I'm threatened, right now and my amygdala is in high force, but soon I know that that prefrontal cortex, my trusted CEO, that leadership part of the brain is gonna capture that, help redirect it and send it to other parts of the body and bring us back into balance. Now, there are other ways that we can do this. You know, CBD is known as a really incredible, valuable source to do this as well. It's known to help 
create that bliss, the endorphins, the oxytocin, those neurochemicals exchange in the brain that help to bring the anti-inflammatory um, response down in the brain when it's firing all of these messages, when the amygdala is hijacked. So those are five tips, perspective, mindset, slowing yourself down, looking at all the different ways that you can create a bigger picture out of the situation and you become less of a victim and you take more control in a place of power versus force. And so I hope this was helpful to learn a little bit more about the neuroscience, the neuroplasticity and how this works. Uh, and so you can take full control of your life no victims. Anyways, thanks for following along. And remember to listen to the Wake and Beauty podcast wherever you listen to your episodes or head over to the YouTube channel. All right. Thanks and bye-bye for now.